Welcome to the next tutorial of ethical hacking and penetration testing and this would be my last tutorial for the DDoS attacks and before we move on to the client side application hacks I want to do at least one more operating system hack and vulnerabilities still exist in the uh, new operating system but they're becoming more rare and rarer. In the previous tutorials I taught you as to how I can go ahead and do a DDoS attack uh, after I have access to the person's computer. But in this tutorial it would be something different. I won't be running any application from his computer or I won't be uh, first accessing his computer or even not accessing his computer. I will not even access his computer at the very beginning. So uh, Windows 7 was released uh, like a lot of time before but still there are people who actually use that. I don't know for why because Windows 8 has much more security but again it has its own different weird kind of bugs which will again irritate a person and the person will be so irritated that he will go back to using Windows uh, XP. Uh, so uh, it may be a hyperbole or something but that's how Windows uh, works. So I would anytime prefer a Linux system but even Linux has its own bugs and at least in Windows you can at least solve a bug but in uh, Linux it does not have that amount of bugs uh, but it is uh, 10 times quicker and it's uh, almost like uh, most of the time it is impossible to hack until unless it is the user's fault uh, through social engineering and uh, Linux is almost vulnerable to most of the kinds of attacks until unless the person is extremely uh, intelligent and uh, he tries to go ahead and find some bugs in the kernels and tries to inject his virus in so inside that and that also through the source file that is through the source website which is again almost like uh, nearly impossible to do but not impossible so uh, besides the Linux talk in this hack I will take advantage of the flaw in the Windows 7 and the Windows Server 2000 operating system that will create an infinite loop and crash the system although this is not nearly as much fun as owning the system it can be very destructive to an institution that relies upon this system to run their organization and as you can see most of the operating system or even uh, I'll just go ahead and show you the Microsoft website uh, the uh, you can go ahead and use the, uh, uh, the techniques such as the DNS one which I told you, uh, taught you in the previous tutorials uh, in these uh, uh, different uh, tools through which I can go ahead and actually uh, gather the information as to which which server Windows server is the person actually using whether it's 2008, 2003 or 2012 and if you go and check most of the uh, people will normally use the 2008 server because it is very user friendly but at the same time it has its own vulnerabilities. So uh, it can be very destructive to this organization uh, without them knowing that how actually system works they directly go ahead and implement that. So enough talk let's get started fire up our Metasploit and let's hack. So if you're new to Metasploit then check out my previous tutorials as to how you can go ahead and do these kind of attacks and pass them some hacks. So little background material. Uh, remember that Metasploit has different types of modules, exploits, payloads, auxiliaries, encoders, NOPs and posts. So in this hack I will use the auxiliary module to attack the Windows 7 and the Windows Server uh, 2008 based system SMBs. So just go ahead and start up the fire up the MSF console by typing MSF console and wait for around two to three minutes or maybe five if you have a slower system okay so we have our metasploit started and if you got these same things access security permission denied then uh, it's, this is just for um, you can see it's a kind of a troll that uh, metasploit has written so if you're new to metasploit and you see, see these things then don't worry about that because uh, this is just for fun and um, um, that Metasploit has created so that it could go ahead and troll new noobs or new users. So just don't worry about that and ignore. And as you can see we have 1389 exploits, 788 auxiliary, 356 payloads and 37 encoders, no 8 knobs and 223 posts over here. And when I say post it is not our Facebook post, it is the post exploit uh, that we would use after going ahead and hacking into a PC. So let's go ahead and start our exploit by typing use auxiliary uh, I used this module when I was using backtrack I don't exactly know whether this still works on uh, our Cal Linux but still go ahead and try to use that auxiliary windows smb slash ms10 underscore negotiate I believe uh, and I'll just type I think that this was underscore loop Let's check if we have this module or if this has been okay. I believe uh, this has been deleted. And let's check. Okay, so we have all these things, 
and we wanted the Windows SMB. So let's check. We have the SMB exploit and we want the MS10. I believe MS10 was removed. We want more. Let's check the SMB09. Yeah, we have the SMB10 uh, negotiate response loop. Perfect. So we will be using this module. And the only thing about it was that it's written 006 over here. And I'll type control C and I'll use. Uh, uh, I'll just going to delete this. I'll paste it over here. Perfect. So, and now I'll go ahead and type show options. And okay, S should be smaller. So, as you can see, that we have these are the SRV host, SRV port, SSL. That would be the false since we are negotiating SSL for incoming connections. And this would be the path for a custom SSL certificate. So, now I will type the auxiliary actually module uh, that we have used. And then we will click show options. So, now we will be setting the SRV host. So, uh, and we will type the SRV host by going ahead and typing SET. And let's say. So we will be using the SR, we will be setting up the SRV host that is our computer. So I'll just type ifconfig and this is my IP address. In your case, it would be different. So I'll just type set in capital. Make sure that you write it exactly as it is or you can just copy paste it from over to here. Set SRV host and just type paste and hit enter. We have set our SRV host. Now we need to go ahead and set our, um, so not X. Okay. So yeah, perfect. Now, since we have our SRV host, now we need to go ahead and use the run. And in the last step, we will run our auxiliary modules before we go ahead and uh, actually execute these things. So uh, everything would be uh, different. So uh, uh, now this would be the last step uh, that I would be doing is that and we will run the auxiliary module and once the auxiliary module executes, it generates a shared folder link which then you can go ahead and send to the target machine and in this case, uh, the link would be something different. So I'll just type run over here. I don't remember exactly. Run should be in capital or small. I'll just run and run. Okay, perfect. It is running and uh, trigger the vulnerable client to try to access shared anything and so what I would do is that I'll just go ahead and copy this and I'll go to this website over here. I can go ahead and run this by going ahead and typing it over here. Most probably I should be able to. Let's see if I am able to. As you can see my computer has become a bit slow. It will probably hang itself. Perfect. So what I actually did was that uh, as you can see if you go ahead and run this computer it will not run. It will just go ahead and stop. So uh, yes, that's a bit confusing. So uh, what I did was that I should uh, go ahead and send this specific thing to my target computer. And as soon as he clicks this specific uh, link, I can go ahead and send him something like to make it look more safe. I can go ahead and send him some kind of web page or I can say, oh my God, look at this specific image or something through email or through Facebook or something else. But as soon as he clicks this thing, his computer is hanged. As you can see, I cannot go in and type anything or I cannot go in and run anything from over here. I'll just add a control plus control alt and then my uh, mouse will be released. If I click over here, it's hanged. I cannot do anything. So in fact, I have DDoSed my Windows 7. If you're a bit confused, I'll explain this to you once more. I created this. This is a SMB loop over here. As you can see, I used this specific payload uh, to go ahead and hack attack this computer. And then I went ahead and created this specific uh, link. So I just needed to go ahead and send this specific link to our target. Uh, and as soon as he clicked this link or ran this link through the browser or through run or through any other thing, this computer will freeze and it will not move or nothing will happen in his computer. As you can see, not even the numlock option will be running. So yes, that is it for this tutorial. You can just go ahead and uh, send any random links to the person's computer and he will be able to, uh, uh, he will just crash his own computer by himself and he won't even come to know what exactly happened. So that's it guys for this tutorial and that would be the last tutorial for the DDO sync of a computer or through Cal Linux or for the DDoS. In the next tutorial, we will be taking a look at how we can go ahead and actually uh, hack into an Android system. But as I don't have an Android uh, with me right now, I'll be just showing you as to how we can do that. I won't be actually able to perform an Android attack. So that's it guys for this tutorial. See you next time.